Uh, we can, and as I said in March, uh, it's posted online in March if you want to go to my Facebook at Barber for Congress. We cannot take any risk with our economy at this time. Um, as, as far as saying that, and, and, and here's what I'm saying really that we need. We need to make evidence-based decisions. We need to make thoughtful decisions on complex issues. We do not need superficial knee-jerk reactions or responses to making decisions that affect the lives and, and, and livelihoods of millions of America. To say that we're dependent on foreign nations is an interesting statement when in fact uh, the United States exports, exports at least 291 million barrels of oil uh, a year to foreign countries. So if we're dependent on countries, why are we exporting that much oil? I know a senator from, from Oregon has requested a congressional investigation into that very fact. Uh, and, and you don't blame the environmentalists. BP is, BP is going to make billions of dollars on drilling in the oil. Let's take personal responsibility for our decisions. If you're going to make billions of dollars, don't go out there unless you can do it safely. BP did not have a plan in place. They did not have a backup plan in place. And the, EP, uh, the EPA had a serious plan that they failed to investigate. I mean, they failed to implement and to require BP to implement. So there's enough blame to go along, around, but we can't jeopardize our beautiful beaches, our resources, or our economy, and that's what we're seeing now. People's lives are going to be changed devastatingly by this uh, event. Thank you. Would you, uh, I was taking a minute for a clarification or a rebuttal on yourself. I do blame the environmentalists for where we are. Okay? To say that there are not people in this administration right now that mean this country harm in every way, I believe is naive. I believe there are individuals in this administration that want to shut down our economy any way they possibly can so they can take the economy that has made this nation great for 230 years and replace it with a socialistic style economy. I believe in the hard-working creative ingenuity of the American people. That they should work hard and they should have something to show for it. For 200 years, that has been a formula. Working hard, honest dealings leads to an improved life. Energy is the tool and, 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 and preventing us from pursuing energy is undermining the strength of this country. That is a fact and that is what the environmentalists are trying to do. So show them that. Yeah, real quick. I've got the answer of why we ship oil out. It's uh, the oil that we get out there in the northern part, up around uh, the Montanas and the Dakotas. It's cheaper for the company up there that gets it, send it across the border in Canada, and it's just logistics things. They refine it over there and then they bring it back. And we also export heavy coking oil. We don't use it here in the States. They use it a lot down in South America. It's got some industrial usage, but it's, heavy, it's a heavy pollutant, and we just don't use it here. That's all. Awesome. Yeah, and, and really it was David, I think, who said about the environmental, about pushing that, that it's the environmentalist's fault. But when BP makes, makes uh, pays uh, hundreds of billions of dollars in dividends to not hold the, pers the corporation that is making billions of dollars solely and totally and completely responsible for whether they are capable of, and competent of drilling in any location that they choose, they're responsible and nobody else. Thank you. Move to our next question. Mr. Scholl will be the first to address this. The issue is foreign policy. And what would be your foreign policy toward Israel and Iran, and also our deficit with China, our trade deficit with China? Mr. Scholl. Foreign policy. Our current foreign policy the Obama policy, it's, uh, the official policy is at first you apologize and if that doesn't work then you bow. So I think what we're seeing out there is our, our former friends and our allies, they're very concerned. And I think that's causing gross instability in the world. You look at what's happening, our enemies feel empowered. North Korea just sank a South Korean sub, 45 individuals were killed. Where was the United Nations outrage? Where was President Obama's outrage? He was fairly contained on that one. So 
we're not dealing with a foreign policy that's all encompassing America first, America leads. And we need to get back to those basics. That was the Reagan doctrine. Peace through strength with our defense. And we were able to lead the world. But what we're seeing right now, we have a very weak, very naive, and a president who's in over his head. He has no executive decision-making experience, and it's starting to show. So he's creating a dangerous world. With regards to what we're seeing in Israel, why is the temperature turned up on Israel? Because they know they can get away with it. And we're going to lose a lot of lives over there in the Middle East. That is a powder keg that's about ready to explode. We signed off on Israel during President Truman's administration. We gave our word, and we need to stand with them. That is the only democracy in the Middle East, and we need to back them. And right now, by not backing them, we're creating a very unstable situation. Dealing with Iran, they're adding to the problem with Israel, and they're also adding to our problem with what we're seeing in Iraq. President Obama needs to stand firm. We need to seal off their border to allow them to stop shipping goods into Iraq. We need to set up our missile defense shield. That's going to take away any threat from Iran and their development of nuclear weapons. And we need to stand firm and tell them no nukes in Iran. Dealing with our trade deficit with China, let's deal with strength. Let's empower American manufacturers. Two minutes, thank you. Ms. Yeah. Um. Iran is such a is such a dangerous problem. Um, the um, you know it's interesting to me that Iran has their nuclear facilities because we gave it to them. Their nuclear capabilities under the Atoms for Peace program. They made a treaty with okay. with us that said that they would never use it for armament. They broken that treaty. And what have we done? Nothing. We've done nothing. That's weakness. That's absolute weakness. And our country needs to be strong. Russia is 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 uh, selling missiles to Iran. And what do we do? Nothing. Israel is talking to Russia about not selling those missiles. But if they do sell those missiles to Iran, what will we do? Nothing. We have to count on Israel to fight our battle with for us. And we know they will. There's no question. Israel has a 757 drone that can be payloaded that came out this year. They will be strong and they will they will do what we shall do should do because we're weak. We have a weak foreign policy. And if we don't strengthen it, it's gonna be the end of this country. Iran has intercontinental missiles that they're working on and will have finished by 2015. If they have nuclear power, those missiles will be armed. We've got to do something to strengthen our national defense um, uh, about Iran. Thank you. And Mr. Sutherland. <clears throat> I can't imagine the, uh, the fear that is in the minds of people in Israel when they go to bed at night. To be totally surrounded by nations that have made it their plight in life to do everything possible to wipe you off the face of the earth. I think that um, uh, they are in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a terribly, terribly difficult situation there. I think that any nation should have the right to protect its own sovereignty. Now, we have an administration now that doesn't believe in fences here, and they don't believe in fences there. They don't believe in fences anywhere because they are naive. They think that this world of 8 billion people are all going to hold hands, get in a circle, and sing Kumbaya. That is not going to happen. You have to make sure, and our allies have always depended upon America doing this, having saying what you mean and meaning what you say. What we have done to not just these uh, list of countries, but what we have done to our allies around the world through removing our commitments of our missile defense system, especially in Eastern Europe, is almost criminal to our allies. Our allies are scared. They're nervous. They feel abandoned. And I guarantee you hadn't heard the last of Putin. KGB, he's got ice in his veins. And I'll tell you something. Um, I think that we do have a weak uh, policy. 
uh, around the world. I think as far as Iran, I think when you 